Hello everyone, good evening and welcome to Loughborough University. It is the 2024 Kit King Trophy Final between the Bradford Dragons and the Derby Trailblazers. Lots of interesting narratives, lots of interesting stories to tell and Jason Swain, of course. I am John Hobbs, pleasure to have you on board. And Jason, it's going to be a really enthralling final and a final close to your heart as well, isn't it? Yeah, and, I, and I've got, you know, fond memories of playing at Bradford, but I've also got a huge respect for both these coaches, both Matt Shaw and Chris Mellor, who played together for the Derby yeah. Storm, as we said in the early interviews. They, they, they're just great guys. They, they, they invest in the game how it should be. They play the game right. They keep it simple. And I think it's an intriguing matchup. Absolutely, and there's a lot of history between um, these two teams, as we've mentioned, and also there's a lot of history for them in this trophy. It'll be the second time that the Derby Trailblazers have reached the Kit King final. They won it in 2022 for the Bradford Dragons. It is their first final. However, it's a third straight final for Ronald Blaine. It is, and... and the key for me is Derby has shortened their rotation and they've been here before. So you would expect them to come out with kind of a familiarity of the final. But like you just mentioned, Ronald Blaine, he's the guy that's come in and he's been here before and not got it done. So he will want to really, really assert himself early. And Bradford have more weapons than meets the eye. Absolutely. And both these teams have actually played each other in the group phase. Derby came away with that win. Jonas Dietrich hit seven three-pointers for 24 points. He will be a key man here today. But there's a lot of firepower in this Derby team who actually currently are top of the NBL Division I leaderboard. Yeah, and they've already got Malcolm Smith, who's a proven scorer in not just this level. He's also done it when they've played the BBL teams as well. But add Rob Marsden into there and that Raheem May Thompson, Rob Marsden, uh, Malcolm Smith kind of trio is a nightmare for anyone to guard. But Bradford, on the other hand, they're so unpredictable. Yeah. Anyone can get it done. Justin Williams, Jordan Whelan, you know, Ronald Blaine, Richard Sulks could come in and score. It's just, it's just an intriguing matchup for me. Absolutely. And you spent a bit of time, didn't you, on Thursday night with the Bradford Dragons. What was the mood like in the camp? Yeah, the mood is very, very relaxed. And I say with, with the all utmost respect to Chris Meller, he don't like it like that. So, you know, guys out there, Zion Tordoff, you know, he's back. He's enjoying his time playing in Bradford. And it just looks like, once again, Bradford have a really together unit. So when it comes down the stretch, they're not going to give up. They're going to keep battling. And, and it just, it's the stage is set. Absolutely. We're live on the Basketball England YouTube channel, so don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Get your comments in. Let us know where you're watching this game from, who you're supporting. It's great to have you on board. We caught up with the two coaches earlier on, starting with coach uh, Matt Shaw of the Derby Trailblazers. OK, I have coach Matt Shaw of the Derby Trailblazers and... Matt, it seems like the last time we spoke, you were playing a Hemel team and you guys weren't favourites in a final that we played in last last year or the year before last. This time, you probably come in as favourites so you're sitting at the top of the league. Does that add any pressure to this game for you? Yeah, maybe a little bit of pressure, but we've got to embrace that pressure. Uh, I think the league table probably a little bit false in terms of Bradford's position in it. They've had a lot of injuries this season. Picked up Ronald Blaine after Christmas. Look at their results since then. I think they're definitely a top four team. So league table might suggest that we're big favourites. I think the reality is it's going to be a really tough game. We're going to have to be at our best to come away with a win. I would agree. And the last silverware you got was the Lynch Trophy in 22. But you've been banging on the door in this Division 1 for absolutely years. And here's another chance to win some silverware. How much would it mean to you and the players of the Derby Trailblazers to get this one done? Absolutely, still fighting for the league, still hopeful for the playoffs. So to get this one today, get some silverware in the cabinet would be awesome. Be mean a lot for the fans, mean a lot for the whole club really. Volunteers, people behind the scenes that work endlessly just to make what they see on the floor happen every, every week. So yeah, really hopeful. Um, it's going to mean a lot if we can get it done. And I must mention a little bit of a personal thing. You and Chris Meller did play together back at Derby Storm. It seems like an eternity ago, but will that be a little bit more of an extra spice? Have you guys been chatting before the game at all? You know, me and Chris speak a lot most weeks, talk a lot of basketball, talk a lot of BS. Um, so <laughs> I think it's going to be one of those that whatever happens, we'll be, we'll be sharing the memory together. It's great to be sharing the floor with him. I think it's their first final for, for a lot of long yeah. time as well since they've been in Div 1. 
when I first took over at the Trailblazers back in 2014, Chris is the only coach that's still coached in the league then. So I think I've coached against Chris more than any other coach in the nation. So kind of fitting that we're playing here in the final against each other. Yeah, and I'm fortunate enough to know both you guys through the duration of basketball. And I think you're, you're shortchanging yourself about the BS. We've got two good coaches coaching today who really deserve to be here. So good luck to both of you and good luck to you seeing as you're right here, Matt. Thanks, Jason. Appreciate it. All right. Hi, of course, Chris Mellor, the Bradford Dragons. And Chris, speaking to Matt Shaw just a while ago, first of all, we've got to take it a little bit personal. You guys played with each other at the Derby Storm. Does that add anything to this game for you? No, not really. I remember he used to say that I used to take all the shots and needed all the passes, but <laughs> reality was I were a better player than him, if I'm not, to be honest. <laughs> well, honesty as ever, Chris. But <laughs> back to the game at hand today. You know, you guys coming with a chance of silverware. It's never been done for Bradford in Division 1. This is your chance. You have a great roster. You must be really licking your lips at this one, Chris. Yeah, we're excited. Like you say, we're pretty deep like them, and we've had a good week's practice. Really looking forward to it. I think certain things, we're going to control the tempo, we get back in transition, rebound well, but yeah, I think it's, on, on paper, I think it's a 50-50 game. Well, we, I've known you for years and lucky enough to actually play for you, which has been great, and we know the shorter the better at times, because you've got a lot of preparation to do. Good luck ahead with this game and, and, and all the best, Bob. Thanks, Jason. All right. So, Jason Swain catching up with both coaches as the stage is set, as you mentioned, but will Derby lift the trophy for a second time or will Bradford lift it for their first time? The last time they were in a final was back in 2009, 2010 season. They were in the National Shield final. So this will be unfamiliar territory, but they will be buzzing for tonight. They will. And in terms of Derby, they come in, you would say, as favourites, top of the league. Uh, but Bradford, it's so close. It, it, they could score from anywhere. It could be so unpredictable. You've got the big three of Derby. It's just an intriguing matchup, John, and, and it's just all to play for. So excited for this one. Absolutely. Derby do have the upper hand over Bradford, but records don't count. It's what happens here on this court. Bradford will certainly be up for the challenge. Who will lift the Kit King Trophy for the fourth time since its exception? Will it be Bradford for the first time, or will it be Derby for its second time? We'll be right back, and then... It's game time here at Loughborough University. Hello everyone and welcome to Loughborough University, a sellout crowd before you as the Derby Trailblazers and Bradford Dragons prepare to lock horns. It is a fascinating occasion and it should be a thrilling game indeed. John Hobbs alongside Jason Swain, a British basketball legend and the stakes could not be higher here today. Yeah, it couldn't, and two great coaches as we spoke about pre-game, and just two teams that are really, really wanting to get more success. Derby have had some success in the last few years in terms of trophies, but Bradford haven't, but both of these teams hungry for that trophy feeling. Absolutely, let's go to the two teams, starting with the designated road team, the Derby Trailblazers, and they will be starting with Sam Maston, Raheem May Thompson, Corey Johnson, Jonas Dietrich, who knows this floor very well, and 2022 Kicking Trophy final MVP, Malcolm Smith. Yeah, and they've got a great team, and the thing that Matt Shaw's done this year is he's cut that team down to approximately eight players playing the majority of the minutes. I'm not saying other guys won't play, however, they've got a good balance. They've managed Touchwood to stay free from injuries, and they're playing exceptionally well as a unit. And a first final for the Bradford Dragons since 2010. 
as they take to the floor. They will be led by Ronald Blaine, Justin Williams, Albert Margai, Zion Tordoff and Jordan Whelan. Yeah, and we talk about Derby having their groove. Well, Bradford also do too. Both these teams have five players in double-figure scoring on each team, so that always means that you're going to not necessarily know who's going to hurt you, and that's the case for Bradford. Will it be Jordan Whelan? Will it be Williams? Will it be Blaine? Will it be Tordoff? Who knows? These two teams have played each other twice so far this season. Derby have come out on top in both occasions. One of them was a picking pool game, which Derby won 93-76. But it's all about today as the game is underway and Bradford getting the first possession here in front of a sellout crowd at Loughborough University as Margai has the ball for the Dragons. Tordoff being marked by Smith. Tordoff nearly ran out of room, finds Williams with four to shoot over Maston. And Maston stands his ground and Derby will get the first play of their game. You can already see the attempt from Williams though, he wants to get going early and so many of these players will, but good defensive play by Derby. Inside to Maston and Maston along the baseline. How good has he been? He's a traditional point guard but moves well without the ball too. And Williams will have his hands full, that's for sure, guarding Maston. Ronald Blaine, who puts it in, and Ronald Blaine has had such an impact since his arrival to Yorkshire in January. It is, and some guys, when they make the first shot, it's bad news, but when he makes his, it's good news, John. He's, he's ready to get rolling. May Thompson, and ball goes out of bounds, and Bradford will get the ball. But already a good start from both teams, great initiative and no fear getting that shot on. Yeah, you can see why these two teams are here. They both move well without a basketball, they cut with purpose. They just look sharp, John, both teams. Whelan. Williams. Williams splits through the defence, kicks it out. Margai thought about the three, goes instead inside and to great success. And I'm going to talk about Albert Margai just a little bit, if you don't mind. It seems like there's a rebirth of that young man. And what I'm saying is he, uh, for Essex, Leopards back in the day, he won this league and single-handedly really carried his team. He's not played through injury over the past couple of years, but he's right back in the mix and playing exceptionally well. As Jonas Dietrich puts in the three to respond for the Trailblazers. Here's Blaine driving. Kicks it out, Margai again. Uh, this time way off with his three-pointer, but you mentioned Albert Margai, a seasoned veteran, had some time in the BBL alongside, you know, playing for the Surrey Scorchers and London Lions, and just a really seasoned veteran who loves the big occasion. Yeah, and it's great to see him back out here playing well. He's been given a chance by Coach Meller, and he's responded. Williams, three to shoot, Margai's got to put it up, and he does, and he hits. The first one was the sighter. That one was all net from Albert Margai. And the Blazers have an 8-5 to five lead. Johnson looking for Smith, but instead drives at Blaine. Master shot block down to four. Dietrich a three, puts it in. Jonas Dietrich, who spent seven years here at Loughborough University playing for the Riders for those seven years, knows this floor very well. Well, there's no place like home, and he'll know the rims, he'll know the scenery. It all plays into a shooter's mentality. Williams. Whelan. Whelan finds a bit of daylight inside over May Thompson. It's a nice move and could have been an and one, and like I said, you don't know who's going to hurt you on this Bradford team. Ferocious noise here inside Loughborough University as Maston Finds May Thompson at the top, and Williams gets the rebound. Good intensity here from the Dragons, but Williams loses the ball, and here is Corey Johnson. Just about finds Maston. Dietrich again, again! Like you say, John, we can only just hear ourselves in here, it's that loud, but Dietrich splashes another one. He's feeling already at home, and great shooting by the number 12 for Derby. 
Here is Margai. Lane going inside, kicks it out. Margai a three. And the rebound by Maston. Probably the easiest rebound he'll ever get. As we enter the, or go over the four minute mark here of the first period. 11 to 10. As Smith goes inside, great footwork inside. And Tordoff, who averages a double-double this season, gets the rebound. Here's Blaine, pulls up for three, and misses everything. Jordan Whelan just saying, calm down, everybody, as Ronald Blaine wants to get going. And I did speak in the opening, as a nice move by Corey Johnson, but I did speak in the opening, who was going to get it done? Can Bradford give each other the responsibility? And not saying that in, in a selfish way, just are they going to figure out who can get it done? Derby with a three-point lead as we enter the halfway mark of this 2024 Kick King final. Jordan Whelan puts up a three, puts it in. Jordan Whelan from downtown. His brother Pat is here in attendance tonight as well. Straight on his feet when that went down as Johnson goes out of bounds and it'll be a Bradford ball. Game is tied at 13, but for Chris Meller, that's a good start for his side. It is, but Jordan Whelan saying on the play before, calm down, let's get a good shot. That was an awful shot, but exceptional talent to make it. What a shot by Jordan Whelan as he's two for two. Game is tied at 13. As a whistle has gone, and the players did very well to hear that as both uh, Derby and Bradford very well represented. It's not a long uh, drive for uh, Derby, only around a 40 minute drive along the motorway. Obviously Bradford a little bit further, but well supported as well. But that's what we like to see. Yeah, this place is absolutely rocking. There were fans that, that it was probably full 30 minutes before tip yeah. off, but all of a sudden 10 minutes before tip, it started to get exceptionally loud. And what an atmosphere we have in here. Absolutely, both sets of supporters arriving as the uh, Loughborough Riders Essex Rebels game was just about concluding. As a mixture of Trailblazers and Let's Go Trailblazers, Let's Go Dragons fans uh, chants are being started here inside Loughborough University. Interested to see if Malcolm Smith can get going now. You know, Albert Margai defensively can guard all different types of positions, but he's currently guarding. Malcolm Smith. Now, Malcolm Smith will obviously want the ball down in the block. Easier said than done against Albert Margai, who's a defensive specialist. But that was an in, is an interesting matchup early on. As Richard Sultz comes into the game, they may change this up a little bit. Absolutely, as uh, Zion Tordoff takes a seat. Zion Tordoff enjoying one of his best seasons. A local lad averaging a double-double this season. Uh, former Great Britain under 20 international. And there's just a little bit of confusion with the table. Yeah, while we get a break in play, we're talking about Zion Tordoff. What, you know, what a great young man he is. Career at Casper, Marist, Houston, Christian. He was deng number two in 2016, was plagued by injuries a little bit, but like he says, represented GB. And he looks to just get some treatment at the side of the court. He's just, I think he's got a bit of blood on him, but he's been a revelation back in his hometown. Absolutely. As Rahad Saltz into the game, replacing him for the first time as Blaine putting the moves on Smith. These two players know each other very well. Saltz a three. And Rob Marsden into the game for the first time, collects the rebound. Raheem May Thompson takes a seat. A dear trick to Johnson. A lot of time on the shot clock, Margai marking him. Marsden. This is the man that could really make the difference for me. You know, great pass there by Rob Marsden, and he can really get it done. Whelan. Good defence, though, from Bradford as Whelan drives to the hoop, lays it up and goes it go. Jordan Whelan is rolling three for three. How do you want it? He's had a layup, a, a three and a floater. Marsden driving, and a foul has been called. Matt Shaw has the luxury of starting either Raheem May Thompson, Rob Marsden, or Malcolm Smith. Malcolm Smith is usually 
a mainstay in terms of starting, but he's flipped both Marsden and Raheem May Thompson around at that position at different times of the season. And what a luxury to have those big three involved in your team. Jace Harrison checking in for the first time as Corey Johnson takes a seat. Jace Harrison missed the majority of uh, the first part of the season. There's a three-pointer there from Jonas Dietrich, but came back for the opening league games of the season. Dislocated his shoulder as Williams has it. Whelan. Whelan a three. And Whelan misses from the top. Here is Maston. Maston nearly got stolen there by Williams. Marsden now has it. Dumps it off to Smith. Smith just about gets it to Marston, blocked by Williams, and away comes Williams now in transition. Gets bumped, puts it up, no good. Whelan goes to the floor, Dietrich, open for three. Wow. Splash! Dietrich is absolutely on fire, but what a start. The refs are letting them play, John. There's not much being called on either end as Blaine pulls up with the three. Absolutely, both ends getting hot now. Dietrich now five for five from the field. All of them three-pointers. Maston finds a bit of room and a foul has been called as Sam Maston will go to the line and the pace just quickening a little bit here. Yeah, exceptionally quick and we have a chance to at least breathe, John, <laughs> as this foul is called, but it, it looks like the referees are going to set the tone. If you're looking for a whistle, find your own, because nothing is being called right now in terms of physicality. Both teams being allowed to play. Consistency has been great by, by the officials in green, but there's been shot making already. The pace is fast. What a game. Tordoff will take, uh, or excuse me, Albert Margai will take a seat. Zion Tordoff checks in as Maston hits his first three throw. So now Bradford go to their biggest line up minus Ricky Fetsky, who's not played much in terms of injury, but they're going big in terms of Tordoff, Sultz, and then your next guy, Whelan. So taking Margai out increases the size slightly. Well, speaking to Ricky Fetsky beforehand, he did say that he will play some minutes tonight as Blaine on the catch and shoot off the back iron. Tordoff and Marsden fight for it. Williams a three. Both teams now going a little cold from downtown. Well, excuse me, Bradford going a little cold from downtown. Here is Maston driving at Salts. Maston nearly lost the ball, gets it back. Good defense from Blaine, but a foul has been called. Yeah, Ronald Blaine called with a foul. It's probably the only one that's been called so far, so he's wondering why that one was, but... I think it was the right call. I think he caught him on the wrist on, on the little putback. As Joe Buchanan checks in for the first time, Jordan Whelan will take a seat. And Joe Buchanan, almost similar with Jordan Whelan, both based in Manchester, but play their basketball for the Dragons. And Joe Buchanan, what a season he's having, mixing, playing for Manchester Magic Academy and the Bradford Dragons and doing exceptionally well. Uh, yeah, I got to speak to him on Thursday and he's 19 years old and I said, OK, tell me a little bit about yourself. And he had so many things to tell me, you know, Manchester Magic, GB, and I said, you're not supposed to be doing all these things at 19. <laughs> but yeah, he's a real talent. Blaine backing down Deertrick. Sulks the extra pass to Williams. Blaine, nine to shoot for Bradford, Salts the hook shot. And the rebound by Maston, who falls to the floor, gets it back. Frantic first quarter here, Harrison. Running into a bit of trouble here, double team finds Smith, and Smith loses it, but a foul has been called, 1-10 remaining, and Derby lead by four. Yeah, Bradford just picked up a couple of fouls by reaching in a little bit. Didn't know whether Richard Sucks did get any of that ball, but I like the patience of both teams. Justin Williams has taken a back seat, and rightly so. Credit to him, to some of the other guys on the team. He's trying to get Ronald Blaine involved. He's trying to get Jordan Williams involved, and credit to him. He's, he, he just wants to win. 
As Sam Maston heads to the bench, Charlie Brown into the game for the first time for Derby. Here is Marsden driving at Tordoff. Marsden misses the turnaround jumper and Malcolm Smith, who had 18 rebounds in the 2022 kick-in final, unable to get one there. Blaine a three. Bradford going cold from downtown at the moment. That's zero for three in the last minute. They are, but they're a team that hang the hat on defense. And you just saw there, Rob Marsden going at Zion Tordoff. Zion Tordoff, not the young man he used to go against, holding his own. Smith, favorite spot, but it rattles in and out. And Derby will keep the ball, much to the delight of the large traveling contingent from Derby. 31.2 seconds left in this first quarter. Everything a final should be, really. It's been intense as Dietrich puts it in. Wow, the degree of difficulty on those shots from Dietrich. He just keeps making them time and time again. Already an outstanding performance, and we've not even done a quarter. Well, there's around a one-second differential between shot clock and game clock, and Blaine looks like he's going to use every inch of that as the seconds tick down. Tored off a three, and that's long, and Dietrich collects the rebound, and that'll do an exciting first ten minutes of action here at Loughborough University, where the Derby Trailblazers lead the Bradford Dragons 24 to 18. Bradford, both Bradford and Derby shooting the ball very well. However, towards the final two minutes, Bradford kind of lost their way a little bit, but there's a lot of basketball still to play here. Yeah, I think it's, it's no problem, no, no room for, uh, for error in this game, however, if you do miss shots early, it allows the other team to get back in it. But basketball is a game of runs. And Bradford have just taken a bit of a lull and Derby have had their run. Now it's time for Bradford to come back and see if they can also get back at them and make their run too. Jonas Dietrich unconscious right now as you see one of the baskets there that he made in that first quarter. Six for six from the field, five for five from downtown. Spent seven seasons with Loughborough obtaining a master's degree in mathematics, but you don't need mathematics to see that he's 100% from the field. Do you not? <laughs> Hang on a minute, let me just get the math here. <laughs> let me uh, yeah. do the quick math. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I hear exactly what you're saying, but you know, good, good news in both ways. Bradford, you said have had a little bit of a lull, but can Jonas Dietrich keep shooting the ball like that? You would, you would have to say probably not, however, if you're a Derby fan, you'd like to say, well, Jonas Dietrich is playing great. We're, we're in good position. So, you know, you can look at it either positively or negative from either side. But both teams look very, very sharp, John. Absolutely. And the majority of the points for Bradford coming from Ronald Blaine and Jordan Whelan. Ronald Blaine has six. Jordan Whelan leads the way with seven. Jordan Whelan, three for four from the field. Really good start from Jordan Whelan with his brother Pat from the Caledonia Gladiators watching on here. It is, and the type of player Jordan is, he needs that kind of start, because if not, he's going to try to shoot himself back into the game. So, you know, good start for Jordan and encouraging. Here's the man again. I seven. said, can he keep shooting like that? Maybe he will. It's a superb seven for seven now for Jonas Dietrich from the field. Five of those from downtown. And slowly but surely, it's an eight-point lead for the Trailblazers here, as Bradford just struggling from the field a little bit. As Jordan Williams, Justin Williams, excuse me, missed that three. However, Bradford do get the ball back. Yeah, Richard Sulks doing all the little things he's done for absolutely years. Leading scorer of all time in Division One. He's still getting it done at his age of 37. Over 16 seasons with the Dragons, Rahad Salks as Williams looking for options. Here is Buchanan, loves the three and in and out with that attempt. Good three-point shooter though, Joe Buchanan. Just unlucky on that one. Yeah, but not a great shot and not a great look for your first shot of the game. Bradford just seen sent in the last two possessions to be making that ball stick. Harrison, another player that can shoot the three very well, Marsden. Finds an open May Thompson. 
And a much needed stop for the Dragons, who trail by eight. Blaine, a bit closer to the basket, and rattles one in. May Thompson did well to collect and respond to the other end. And what a pass by Charlie Brown. You know that's one thing Charlie Brown will do. He's a pass first guard, and he always has his head up. Beautiful play by Charlie Brown. The traditional pass first point guard rarely shoots the ball. Buchanan, Blaine, finds Williams. The extra pass, Salks gets May Thompson in the air. And another turnover as Charlie Brown picks it up. Before long, we have to see Jordan Whelan back in this ball game. Doesn't look like the shooting ability of Bradford is going to stretch the floor too much at the moment with Sulks and Tord off on the outside. It's not their game. And another three, this time from Jace Harrison. And it's an 11-point lead. And right on cue, Jordan Whelan will check in momentarily for the Dragons. Blaine, Williams, Bradford really need a score here. Buchanan finds Blaine, six to shoot. Williams, great defense from the Trailblazers, but with two seconds left on the shot clock, Jace Harrison commits the foul. Just looks like Bradford are standing around a little bit. The ball is in the hands of Justin Williams quite a lot, which can be the detriment to their offense, it doesn't really move as Richard Sulks takes a breather and Jordan Williams comes back in, that may help. Smith and Johnson also into the game for the Trailblazers. Harrison and Marsden take a seat. Certainly a great start to this second period for the Trailblazers and a marker has certainly been laid down as they aim for their second kicking success. Whelan inside. Blows the layup, and away come the Trailblazers. Three on two, Dietrich misses his first. However, they get the ball back, and May Thompson misses the short jumper. Frantic pace, John. Whelan. Whelan drives, blocked by May Thompson. The only disappointing thing for us, John, commentating is this game's going so fast. There's no breaks in play, and we're already down to only seven minutes remaining in this first half. Absolutely, and it's I, flown by, hasn't it? Yeah, it's such a <laughs> such a good game. You don't want it to you don't want it to go this fast. Absolutely, but while we got a break in play, you know, we mentioned at the top of the show, there's loads of interesting stories with these two teams, history being made. Here today, of course, it's Derby's, you know, they're the first team to reach this final twice. Bradford reaching their first final since 2010. However, for the two coaches, Chris Meller on Bradford and Matt Shaw of Derby, they know each other exceptionally well, were former teammates back when it was the Derby Storm in the BBL. They were kind of bench warmers, admittedly, in the yeah. BBL, but played very well for their Division II feeder team. You know, for you as you know, a player back in the 90s playing for the Manchester Giants, what do you remember of Meller and, and Shaw? Well, I was fortunate to grow up learning how to play with Chris Meller at 15 years old, and he was about 20. And I grew up playing for Calderdale Explorers for Curtis Xavier. And, and Chris Meller was one of my kind of veterans on the team. Matt Shaw I played against him a lot when he played for Derby and Mansfield and, and, and those kind of Midlands teams. But... They're both great guys, and you only want, you, you don't really want a loser in this competition because of those two people. They're both really good friends, and as you say, play together, but I'm glad it's th these two teams that are in the final. Two players, two, two coaches who know each other very, very well as Williams puts in a three from the corner, right out of the timeout and in front of the Bradford bench. And that's a massive shot. I said he's deferred to other players, but He's capable of absolutely lighting this gym up. Inside, Maston. Another guy averaging 20.3 points a game, Sam Maston. Nice finish with the left. Lane inside, kicks it out. Buchanan wide open, sinks it. Big shot by the 19-year-old. Nice pass by Ronald Blaine. Joe Buchanan says, take that. Turnaround jumper from Maston is no good. 
As Tordoff gets it stolen by Dietrich, puts wow. it in! Jonas Dietrich is unconscious! Jonas Dietrich, give that man a cape, John. He cannot miss. Williams, Buchanan. Blaine, Blaine driving and scoring. He got the hand on May Thompson and made no mistake. For the first time, we saw Ronald Blaine being able to turn that corner. He has the advantage in speed over Raheem May Thompson. Todd Johnson off the glass, too strong, gets his own rebound. And will slow it down, but there's nine on the shot clock here for Derby. Up by eight. Finds a bit of daylight, kicks it out. Maston, shot clock's winding down. Inside. Oh, wow. And uh, well, I'm not sure if that hit the rim. However, Derby will still have the ball. Maston. Johnson. Nearly a big three for Corey Johnson, but uh, it's off to the right. And here comes Williams. Buchanan wide open. And this time he misses these three from the other side of the wing, and a foul has been called. And it's not a good shot. It's a heat check, but it's too early. You've made one shot from the left-hand side, and you're three foot outside a three-point line. You have to move that basketball. Coach Meller just talking to him. He's 19 years old. He has to understand the moment, and it doesn't mean that you have to get going. It means you need to play a solid basketball and make open shots. As Margai checks into the game for the Trailblazers, Ronald Blaine takes a seat alongside Justin Williams. Makar Savary Richards will uh, check in as well, but a timeout has been called, and it's been a good start to the, heart of the second quarter from Derby. They built a big lead, but Bradford's slowly getting into it. However, right now they just need some stops, Bradford. They do, it's all to play for, but the fact that Jonas Dietrich has absolutely lit this gym up has not helped Bradford's cause in any way. And the, the advantage that Derby have is they only go in eight deep, so they've made minimal substitutions where they're always in a rhythm, whereas Bradford have now got a lineup that hasn't really played much in this game already. So, you know, you mentioned Williams going to the bench. You know, they, they, they're in unfamiliar territory in the moment. So we'll see if that has an issue. But Jonas Dietrich, I mean, wow. Uh, it, absolutely. Eight of nine from the field, 22 points already. And more than half of Derby's points have come from the number 12, who knows this floor, as we said, very, very well. And right now, Bradford's struggling to find an answer for him, but they have the talent, they have the capabilities to do so. Talking about the psychology of the game, it's kind of a roll the dice thing, because you know Jordan Whelan will want the ball in his hands and want to score. Can he get it done or not? And it's such a big moment even in this second quarter. Malcolm Smith now zero for five from the field, hasn't registered a field goal or a point in this game. 30 points, 18 rebounds in the uh, 2022 Kick King final. Exactly what goes. Dietrich has as Whelan goes all the way. Tough shot by Jordan Whelan. But like I say, he's gonna go. And if he can make some shots now, it'll bring them back. But if he misses some shots, could extend this lead significantly in Derby's favour, let's see. Whelan now moves on to nine as Johnson has the ball, loses it, and Joe Buchanan says thank you very much as the possession arrow will go the way, in fact. I'm sure as to what the call was actually there, I thought it was a jump ball. It's gonna be a foul call Fouls. on Corey Johnson, it looked like it was gonna be a jump ball, but Matt Shaw will be so happy because <laughs> Corey Johnson's going out, but look who he's throwing back in, Jonas Dietrich. Absolutely, So yeah. Matt Shaw knows what he's doing. That's why I've got you here, really. Yeah, he'll, <laughs> he'll, he'll say sorry to Corey Johnson, sorry, but really he's like, I'm getting this guy back in. Margai, Buchanan, a three, and he gets it to go. Big shot by Joe Buchanan. Showing no fear as soon as he gets the ball, that's straight away on his mind. Smith 
It's a great contest by Zion Tordoff, doing all the little things as Margai hits the deck. And Margai not happy with that call. And Jordan Whelan also protesting, but either way, this has been a good spell for Bradford. You know, they've reduced the deficit to three points as we see the replay there. And there's Albert Margai. Yeah, and wow. Albert, Albert Margai is right. That yeah. ball was tipped out. Um, the good thing about the referee, yes, you're going to get one wrong, but she didn't tee him up, she didn't go after him, and that's, you Absolutely. know, Polly's poly, I mean, refereeing. We have uh, the deficit of actually having instant replays. They don't. They see it as they... They call it as they see it. As Buchanan has it. 3.20 remaining in the half. The Trailblazers in the midway stage of the second period. Margai loses the ball, and here comes Dietrich, and in transition, it is Sam Maston and a foul. Nice finish and by Sam Maston. Unsportsmanlike as well. Wow. Nice finish by Sam Maston. He switched hands going right to left, kissed it off the glass, didn't really allow Jordan Whelan to get there. As we see, he just put that ball in his left hand. And Jordan Whelan comes up with a foul. And I don't know, that used to be because of intent. Definitely no intent there by Jordan Whelan, but it's now deemed because it's the last guy back and he's Ooh. coming, you know, from, from, from behind him, so. Well, over the last three years, referees have really stamped down on uh, those type of fouls. It's much easier now to get an unsportsmanlike foul. And obviously, yeah. Sam Maston gets the uh, free throw and now Derby will have the ball back and a 14 second shot clock as well. And all of a sudden, Bradford, who reduced the deficit to three, now are down by six. Joe Buchanan at 19 has the added responsibility of guarding the man who's on fire, Jonas Dietrich. Maston again! What a finish. And a foul, Sir Maston. Sam Maston is absolutely pumped. 11 points now for Sam Maston. Back-to-back, -back. three point play opportunities for him. He lost the ball, still had it, and had the awareness to put it in. And a 93% foul shooter for the season, makes no mistake. And all of a sudden, it's a 6-0 run for the Trailblazers. Two forty-seven remaining. Savary Richards off the back iron with his elbow jumper. But he gets the ball back. It's one on two, he's all alone, and Jace Harrison picks it up. Nothing being called in this game as Savory Richards looked like he was hit on the play, nothing called. Off the glass, May Thompson, wheeling rebounds. Great defense once again by Zion Tordoff. It's a shot that May Thompson can make, but it was contested well. Two rebounds now for Jordan Whelan to go with nine points is Marsden with the rebound. Marsden, Harrison, puts up a three, puts wow. it in, Jace Harrison! Derby are on fire, an unorthodox left-handed jumper, because it's like a slingshot from his waist. But Rob Marsden with the beautiful screen and Jace Mark, sorry, Jace Harrison on point. Derby are now nine for 12 from downtown. They are feeling it from beyond the arc, and it's a 12-point advantage to the Trailblazers, who are looking to make it a hat-trick of wins for the season against the Dragons but on the grandest stage of this weekend. Loughborough University and the Kit King Trophy final in front of a sellout crowd here at the prestigious university. What an occasion it has been here today and it just feels like a, you know, a great showpiece final here on the Basketball England YouTube channel.
It does. I mean, when we when I was on my way down here to Loughborough today, I was thinking, oh, I wonder what's going to be like in the in the arena, and it's absolutely packed. You know, courtside seats are full, the stands are full, people are noisy, it's loud, it's it's two good teams, and Derby have always been supported very well over the years. A bit like Hemel have two, Worthing two, but you know Bradford have brought quite a lot of people here today, Absolutely, so yeah. you know they're doing a good job as well. Well, Bradford, who play out of the uh, Bradford College Sports Hall, they you know have a great amount of fans in that tiny gym, and they really pack it out week in, week out. However, last week's win over Worthing Thunder was their final home game of the season. They now hit the road for the final uh, portion of their regular season. Here is Margai. Bradford, though, really needs some points on the board. 128 remaining in the half. Tordoff. And Dietrich collects the loose ball, and again, Derby have it. Harrison driving at Tordoff, and his pass goes straight out of bounds. That was actually good defense from Tordoff. You know, Harrison put the brakes on, but Tordoff stayed with him. Yeah, and the one thing he can do, Zion Tordoff, is guard from one to five. He's long, he's quick, he's got good positioning on defense, and he can contest jump shots. Zion but Tordoff, who had 21 points, 12 rebounds last week against the Worthing Thunder, averaging 15 points, 10 boards this season. What a season he's having. And here he is on the ball now. Williams, Buchanan from the corner, splash. Big shot, and he's come to play, and he's keeping their team in it. Both him and Jordan Whelan have come to play, but a technical foul being called on maybe Matt Shaw. Well, we saw five technical fouls called in the uh, earlier game between Loughborough and Essex, and wouldn't be a day out here at Loughborough without seeing a technical foul in the Kit King final, I guess. It wouldn't. And, <laughs> and you know, the refs do want to assert a, a level of respect. However, this is an emotional occasion for both these two coaches. You have to really cross the line for me to get a technical foul. Otherwise, turn a blind eye and let's let the emotion play out because without that emotion, there isn't a good basketball game. So Absolutely. Well, Ronald Blaine hits the free throw, playing his 10th game for the Bradford Dragons this season since joining in the new year. 18.6 six assists last week in his game against the Worthing Thunder, his former club. And what an impact he has had for the Bradford Dragons, playing in his third straight final. No player has done that here in this Kit King Trophy. And this is his actual first game in the Kit King Trophy for Bradford as well. Yeah. It always seems to be the bridesmaid at these finals, you know. <laughs> you would love for him and Bradford to get it done, but, you know, Derby are putting on an exceptional performance and no better than Sam Master as he one. rolls it. How many am ones are you going to have from I that I think that guy? was a goaltend, I think. I think that uh, there was no foul, but... Uh, I think Ronald Blaine smacked the backboard, so they just, the referees, I think, just wanted to make, no, it is a three-point position. Oh, my apologies. You look at me sternly. No, I'm just <laughs> thinking even the great John Hobbs gets one wrong every now and then, right? I get plenty wrong, trust me. <laughs> Sam Maston to the line and connects on the three-point play. Three three-point plays for Sam Maston in this half. There's a three-pointer there, first time into the game for Jabari Edwards, and he gets the ball back. Here is Blaine, driving at May Thompson. Good defense from Harrison. Shot clock down to four, and the finish from Tordoff. Yeah, big shot by Zion Tordoff. I know it only cuts the lead down to nine, but if they can get a stop here, Bradford, they'll be more than happy going into the half. However... Marsden puts it in at the buzzer! A sucker punch to Bradford, but joy and delight for Derby as they lead 50 to 39 at the half. A great end to what has been a brilliant second quarter for the Trailblazers, led by 22 points from Jonas Dietrich, six three-pointers 
in that hole. Sam Maston has 16 points and leading the way for the Dragons, Ronald Blaine with 11 points. Yeah, and Ronald Blaine has been very, very good, but Jonas Dietrich has been absolutely off this chart. It's just amazing how well he shot the basketball and 50 points, John, in a half against the team that lay the hat on defense. However, Dar uh, Bradford, excuse me, trailed by double figures against Worthing last week. They're more than capable of coming back. Yes, they are, and don't, don't, you know, don't go anywhere, everybody watching at half time. But this Derby team are absolutely rolling. It'll be a pleasant break for Coach Meller to get into the half and try let things cool off at least for the half-time break. So it is half-time here at Loughborough University and the Trailblazers trailing, or excuse me, blazing a trail as they lead the Bradford Dragons 50 to 39. We'll be back in roughly 13 minutes time. Don't go anywhere.
Hello everyone and welcome back to Loughborough University where the Derby Trailblazers lead the Bradford Dragons 50 to 39 in the 2024 Kick King Trophy Final. That man, Jonas Dietrich, unconscious right now, 22 points, six three-pointers. And the Bradford Dragons, who've been shooting the ball pretty well and have used their inside presence of Zion Tordoff to great success, but have it all to do in the third period. John Hobbs, Jason Swain, keeping you company for the second half. And it's all to do for Bradford, but they've tried, they've come back from bigger deficits before as we start the third. I mean, it's extraordinary how they have 39 points, which is, <laughs> you know, no shame against this Derby team, but Derby have just 50 points. It's unbelievable. Can Jonas Dietrich and co keep shooting the basketball as they have been doing? And can Bradford Dragons get it going? I'd like to see Jordan, not Jordan Williams, sorry, Justin Williams get going early on. That would really change the landscape for Bradford. And all this while Malcolm Smith, who's on the ball right now, is zero for seven from the field. But he gets his first field goal there, right on cue. Yeah, and you can't keep a good man down, but you're right, I was thinking that at half time. Malcolm Smith, scoreless in the first half. Who would have thought that? Blame to Margai. Lane gets it back with seven to shoot for the Dragons. Williams, a step back three in and out, and Smith rebounds. Nifty footwork from Williams, didn't have the end result. Good defense by the Derby Trailblazers. Smith gets it back, guarded by Margai. A seasoned defender, but Smith again, and a foul. And Malcolm Smith quickly now on four points. Yeah, and this is the danger of Derby, you know, they have five players in double digits every single game. And that's one of them that has proven time and time again he can get it done. And Malcolm Smith now to the line, an 81% foul shooter. One of five survivors from the 2022 Kick King Trophy success where they beat Newcastle in Sheffield. Blaine, who was on that Newcastle team. Margai, three. And the ball will go to the Trailblazers. Ball went behind the backboard. And I know Coach Mellor sat over there thinking, do they go with Joe Buchanan? He's 19 years old, he had the hot hand in the first half because they're daring Albert Margai to shoot that basketball, not known as an outside threat. And that's a backcourt violation as Sam Maston couldn't hang on to the pass and the ball goes out of bounds and a sigh of relief for the Bradford Dragon fans as they get the ball back and a chance to eat away at this deficit. Williams. Williams gets it back from Tordoff. Here is Blaine. Blaine driving. And an offensive foul call that you can see what that means to Matt Shaw. A great defensive sequence there. Yeah, and you can tell that's been coached time and time again. Extra rotation, getting off the ball on defense. And it's that man, Corey Johnson, who doesn't look like he's had his way offensively, but chipping in at a defensive end. Great play by Corey Johnson. Roy Johnson had 22 points when these two teams met in the league in December. And good defence the other end from Bradford. Scrappy but getting the job done as Blaine pulls up for three. Nice shot by Ronald Blaine. He won't go away easy. Needs to get going. Smith collects it inside. No basket. Foul called on the floor. And Malcolm Smith not happy with that as are the Derby fans. And such a conundrum for Coach Mellor. Malcolm Smith has been more than assertive at the beginning of this second half, and guarding him, Albert Margai, undersized, not under strength, just undersized. But do they keep that as it is? 
been a good start to this third quarter for Malcolm Smith after being scoreless in the first half as Johnson off the back iron with his three from the wing. Here is Williams. Good defense though from Smith, but Bradford will get the ball back. So you have to believe at this point that you can win this game if you're Bradford. It's not good enough just to keep it close. You have to believe that you can win because now's the time that you can question whether or not you can get it done. Tordoff inside over Smith gets it to go. Nice finish by Zion Tordoff. He's not had the looks a lot in the first half. Gets that one to go. Only Tordoff's second field goal in this game. As Maston, a lefty, puts in a three. Maston got the switch and the bigger Tordoff having to guard him. Maston smelt blood and knocked that one down. Nice shot by Sam Maston. Whelan putting the moves on Johnson. Williams, a pull-up shot in and out. Smith collects the rebound. Smith now with five rebounds. Drives to the hoop at the other end, and Justin Williams collects the rebound. Here is Whelan. Whelan with a wild hook. And May Thompson comes up. Here is Master, the pull up three. Money! Wow. These guards for Derby have been great. If it's not Sam Master, it's Jonas Dietrich. They're happy for each other to get it going, and what a shot by Sam Maston. Love the energy by that young man. Maston now moves on to 22 points in his own right. Two for two from downtown. Margai driving at Dietrich to great success. Nice finger roll, and Albert Margai used his body to full effect and extended with the right hand. Nice touch by Albert. Maston, beautiful pass inside, and May Thompson blows the layup. Sigh of relief for Bradford who come up with it. Williams, the extra pass. This one Margai has to go, splash. and it does. That is a big time shot by Albert Margai. They dared him to shoot the basketball. Those ones have to go if Bradford have any chance of getting back into this one. Smith. Gets the ball out to May Thompson. Six to shoot for Derby. Dietrich, long three, bang, puts it in. And he had a hand right in his face, but it's still poor defense by Justin Williams. Dietrich just needs an inch of room as and Blaine Ronald the other Blaine. end. Wow. <laughs> Anything you could do, I could do as well, says Ronald Blaine. Great sequence here from both teams. Maston driving at Tordoff. Oh, nice. Beautiful. Nice. What a third quarter Sam Maston's having. He now leads all scores. 24 for Maston. Margai. Margai driving the easy layup. Nice move by Albert Margai, and we're seeing offense after offense. Which team will get two or three stops in a row? Margai now moves on to 12 points as well. Five for eight from the field. Dietrich. Bit of a heat check there for Jonas Dietrich as Lane and Smith tangled up. Flop warning for Jonas Dietrich as Ronald Blaine dances and shoots the three ball. Off the back iron for Ronald Blaine. Ronald Blaine, three for seven from downtown in this game. Smith putting the moves on Tordoff. Turnaround jumper is money. Nice spin move by Malcolm Smith. Margai slows the play down. And it deflected out of bounds, and it came off May Thompson last as Jace Harrison, Rob Marsden prepare to check in, and Joe Buchanan checking in for Whelan. And that's a, you know, a decent substitution there. Joe Buchanan had a great first half, and Chris Miller letting him come onto the floor and say, right, show us what you can do. It is a good substitution, as Joe Buchanan was, will be 
licking his lips at getting back into this one. The downside is you lose Jordan Whelan slightly, but into the game, Richard Sulks to just kind of get some sort of poise within this game. Sulks certainly a player that can get it done at both ends. Tordor for three. And that's a shot that they'll give Zion Tordor all game. Master. Inside it goes to Smith, over Sulks and a foul! And you can fall in love with the player Malcolm Smith, but Rob Marsden, such composure as he put that ball right down the seam. So Malcolm Smith was able to catch and score. Great high-low play. Rob Marsden, a Findlay graduate. Applied his trade at Sheffield and Leeds Carnegie. What a player he's been over the years. Absolutely. Nice pass right in the pocket where Malcolm Smith needed it. Rob Marsden, a former British Basketball League player. And veteran, last played for the Sheffield Sharks before coming over to Derby. As Jonas Dietrich comes out, Charlie Brown checks in, and Ricky Fetsky comes into the game for the first time. Zion Tordoff takes a seat. Yeah, Rob Marsden going back to his college career, won an NCAA Division II championship in 2009 for the Findlay Oilers. I mean, not many people have done that. And then has come back over and has been an absolute stalwart within the game. Absolutely. And speaking of stalwarts, Ricky Fetsky, another veteran of the National League, on the ball now, the number 13. Here is Buchanan on the catch and shoot. That's off the back iron. Sulks with the offensive rebound, but off right with his hook. Yeah, dangerous times here for the Bradford Dragons. Just looks like things are getting out of control. The thing for Derby is they've been here before, they know how to play these types of games. They know who to get the ball to. Good defence from Salts. Brown, a three. Charlie Brown doesn't shoot often, but when he does, he's a decent three-point shooter off with that one, though. Here is Williams. Savory Richards, Buchanan. Dancing on Harrison. Good footwork, but good defense, a mixture of Harrison and Brown, and Derby get the ball. And to be fair, the refs haven't called that all game, so still being consistent. Chance for Derby to take their biggest lead of the game at 20 points. But the roof of here has come unglued as Muston Short with his three, and Bradford get the ball back with 153 of the third remaining. So for any chance of winning, Bradford need three stops in a row right now, and three scores. This game has to be around the 14-point mark to be achievable, I would say. As said, they need scores. Do Bradford, Buchanan. Williams dancing, and the foul has been called on the floor. 137 remaining, and as you say, Jason, a couple of stops needed for Bradford, and they need to convert them into points. They do, and Ricky Fetsky being on the floor just noticed the offense that Bradford are playing. They're leaving him at the top of the key. He's more than capable of making the three ball. I'll roll the dice and stick it in his hands at the top of the key for a couple of looks. Ricky Fetsky, who hasn't played a lot this season due to surgery. He's had multiple injuries that he hasn't really, he said, let heal. And uh, he's using this season to um, get the surgery that he needs. He hasn't played much. But with Bradford having probably one of the deepest squads in Division One, Fetsky knew that this was the right time. Yeah, but Coach Mello going with what he's always known best, insults and Fetsky inside. Fetsky battling with Smith. Williams had a piece of it. Here is Marsden. And Brown holds it up. Inside Marsden. Good defense from Micah Savary Richards. And here comes the Dragons with Williams. Williams driving. Deflected away by Harrison. And they get the ball back, and Harrison is all alone. 
nothing being called here. No fouls whatsoever. Richard Soaks just got his arm ripped off. Nothing being called. It's a 20-point lead for the Trailblazers. Buchanan, and a whistle has now gone. An off-the-ball foul has been called. And it's on Malcolm Smith. Bizarrely, a foul being called after <laughs> all that. Maybe the referees heard us, I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> However, John, whoever listens to us... Yeah, we apologise in advance. <laughs> <laughs> Bradford with it all to do, though, as Blaine has it. Buchanan, a three from the top. Gosh, that needed a go. But now Derby can have a potential two for one if they want to, to end this third quarter. Marsden driving at Fetsky. Now Salks comes to help. Two Bradford legends there marking Rob Marsden. And Bradford get the ball back. Yeah, they're doing Richard Salks so good at that. If you leave the ball out there hanging, he's going to snatch it. And he's going to either get a jump ball or a steal. Well, Leeds, you know, Bradford in steals this season, does Rahad Salks, as Ricky Fetsky goes back to the bench, Zion Tordoff comes back in. Derby going into a zone as Richard Salks puts it on the floor. And he gets the ball back, and the pass to Tordoff. Easy finish for Zion Tordoff. Yeah, lucky break there for Bradford, just what they needed. Can they get a stop to keep it a, a massive 18 points down? Brown, got to put it up here. Does that count? It does! Wow, Malcolm Smith. Just when you thought you had all angles covered, Malcolm Smith turns around and throws it through the hatch. Malcolm Smith with 12 third quarter points. And Derby have accelerated ahead. They now lead by 20 going into this fourth period. And it's just been agonizing for the Bradford Dragons because they came out with good, en good energy at the beginning of the third, but Derby have played just so well, and Matt Shaw will be over the moon. Coaches can put game plans into play, and they could come up with a strategy, but at the end of the day, the players have to play, and have they responded in these first three quarters, John? Absolutely, and somewhere up in the heavens, the great Clarence Wiggins is looking down and is so proud of what this Derby Trailblazers team is becoming right in front of our very eyes and a guy who meant so much to, to basketball in Derby, Clarence Wiggins, and obviously sorely missed every day, but a legend in British basketball. Yeah, no one knows any, any better than that than Matt Shaw, who's flown the flag for this Derby Trailblazers team, you know, for, for a heck of a long time. And, you know, you're right, Clarence Wiggins, you know, rest in peace to him, he would be so happy about what's happening now but Matt Shaw has been instrumental in in keeping that culture absolutely and not just on the court for Derby but off the court as well they have an absolute magnitude of great social media experts that run their social media page and they promote their club in the community absolutely fantastically and uh, one of the uh, People that do that as well is a guy called Nick Higgins, who is celebrating his 40th birthday today. So happy birthday to him. Yeah, happy birthday. Of course, Lauren Newham, another Derby Trailblazers social media expert, now ruling the roost at the Sheffield Sharks. And no doubt she'll be watching this and is smiling from ear to ear as Jace Harrison goes inside with an offensive foul call. It will be an offensive foul. And talking about Sharks, I go back to my earlier point. We've got Ronald Blaine, who played for Hawaii Pacific Sharks. We do have a BBL legend who played for Hawaii Pacific Sharks and also played for Sheffield Sharks. And that player was? Did you get it? No, I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> was the absolutely sensational basketball player called Roger Huggins. Oh. And what a player he was. A legend in the early to mid-90s for the Sheffield, and late 90s, actually, for the Sheffield Sharks. I mean, uh, unbelievable talent. Absolutely. And, and a great guy, too, mm. to go with it. But, yeah, Roger Huggins was both a shark in Hawaii and a shark over here. Roger Huggins, who 
dedicated so much of his playing career to the Sheffield Sharks back in the 90s and led the Sharks to a lot of success in the old Budweiser League, or the British Basketball League now. Yep, and I was fortunate enough to stand around and watch Roger score a lot. Not on you though, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> But from the past to the future as Joe Buchanan at 19 has the ball and is quickly trapped. But he kicks it out to Williams. Williams, the foul is called and an offensive foul at the other end. That's on Ronald Blaine. Yeah, I'm not sure what... No, no comment from me. Well, it happened away from the, the ball, so either way, Derby have the ball back, leading by 20 in the early stages of the fourth. Brown, nice passing, oh, nice pass. and the finish from Marsden. Malcolm Smith with the vision. Good enough vision to see people waving out of planes. That one was right on the money for Rob Marsden. Buchanan, catch and shoot. And Joe Buchanan now going a little cold from downtown. And Bradford have been trying to get them all back in one shot. They've not been able to make any from the three-point line down this last stretch of play. Corey Johnson, and that's off the back iron as well, as both teams miss successive three-pointers as Ronald Blaine driving down Main Street, kicks it out to Williams. Williams from the foul line. Nice shot, but it's been maybe a little bit too late for Justin Williams. Justin Williams now moves on to just five points. Two for ten from the field for him today. Johnson. Smith. Tangled oh, no up. Foul. No call. Buchanan misses the ball. Lane gets it back off the glass, gets it to go. And a timeout called by Matt Shaw, who's having a quick chat with the officials. As, uh, it was almost six and one half a dozen the other, I guess. It's just unbelievable that there's no foul call at that end. You know, I, I... Here we go on the replay as Smith with the turn on Williams and then... So Justin Williams Justin, on his back, yeah. Sulks has the ball. Wow. Well. You know, like I've said you know, at the start, we get the benefit of seeing the replay as it happens, but the referees have to see it as they call it. Yeah, they call it as they see it. They don't get the benefit of replays here. Yeah, I mean, it's been a very physical game, but say what you want, the refs have been consistent throughout. They've not really called anything. Uh, they've just let them guys play. So I suppose you can argue that it's totally fair. 19 fouls have been called in this game in total, in this game. With two minutes played in the fourth quarter, that's quite a phenomenal statistic in its own right, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But Derby hold all the cards right now, leading 77 to 59. 11 from 19 from downtown, they lead the league in three-point percentage at 39%. Bradford a bit down the pecking order at 24%. It's amazing how effective the three ball is in today's game. It seems to be a defining thing. You know, for any team to be successful, they have to shoot it at a high clip. And Derby are capable of doing that and have done so today, but it just seems such a big factor. That, you know, more threes are a shot than ever has been before. I blame that Steph Curry. Oh, what a player. <laughs> Here is Dietrich, who's had great success from beyond the arc today. May Thompson. Shot clock at six. Harrison, beautiful move, but this is the layup. Dietrich rebounds. Harrison gets it back. Drives baseline. Dietrich off the glass, misses. And toured off with the rebound. Would you sub Dietrich out for that? Oof. Thank goodness I'm not a coach. As Sulks gets it off the second attempt off the miss from Williams. It's probably the only thing Dietrich has not been perfect on is that little three-footer he's missed. <laughs> but 
we, well, talk, we talk about the culture that Matt Shaw's instilled, and Dietrich not over worried about getting going as he shoots the ball from the corner. This is again. He hasn't. He hasn't really asserted himself because he's more than comfortable in knowing his team are in a good position, and that's not nothing to do with X's and O's. That's to do with the culture of the basketball club. As Blaine hits a three, well, he hits seven three pointers when these two teams met. In the pool stage of the Kick King Trophy, he had 24 points that day. Looks set to do the same thing here today. Marsden driving, but not scoring. Blaine rebounds. Rebound number three for him, and he's back down the other end. Buchanan wide open, spot. Gap is 10. Bradford on a roll. We just thought this game was out of reach. And Ronald Blaine taking it by the scruff of the neck. Knocks a three down and provides an open one for Joe Buchanan. And still six minutes and ten seconds remaining. Maston doesn't answer. Harrison just about misses the floater, actually. May Thompson at the third attempt. No, torn off rebounds. Bradford big catching offense for a break. Bradford. This is a big play. Can this ball game be cut to either Sultz eight or seven? Nice move by Sultz. And we have a ball game, John. Timeout, Matt Shaw, a hard Sulks with the bucket inside. And it's an eight point game all of a sudden. And now it's the Bradford fans who rise to their feet. We talk about culture of basketball teams. Matt Shaw's team have absolutely been great. But Chris Meller's team will not say die. Well, Bradford last week trailed by as many as 16 points against the Worthing Thunder and won 86-81. It's an even bigger deficit here today. They've trailed by as many as 22 and have reduced the deficit to eight. It's that never say die attitude that Chris Meller's team have. And that's why they're in this big final. It is, and the likes of, you know, this is where Ronald Blaine is so important. He's a guy that just won't quit. And he doesn't like losing, he has a, he has a very, distaste for any any loss and, and you need that with guys even in scrimmages in the uh, in training and in the in the off season Ronald Blaine hates to lose and whenever he's lost a, a game in a scrimmage he immediately runs it back he doesn't want the ch teams to be changed he wants it as it is determined to win every time is Ronald Blaine It's all to play for now. We're not even halfway through the fourth. Smith. Maston. Shot clock at eight. May Thompson, a bit of daylight, splash. Oh, beautiful turnaround by Raheem May Thompson, son of Leo Rogers, another ex-legend. It will turn around and splash that one. Nice play, Raheem. Raheem May Thompson, two for nine from the field. Buchanan answers back wow. at the other end. Joe Buchanan has it going. Was an awful shot, but a great one for Bradford. Seventy-nine, seventy-two. Halfway through the fourth. Maston to Harrison. Six to shoot. Harrison from the foul line, blocked by Tordoff. Maston has it back. Shot clock violation, Bradford get it back. What a possession by the Bradford Dragons. Richard Sultz was guarding Malcolm Smith. He said none shall pass and he didn't allow the ball into the post. Zion Tordoff comes up with yet another contest and a block. Momentum changer, if Bradford score here. What a last few minutes we have in store. Well, the Bradford Dragon fans are not even on the stands now. They're pretty much on the court side area. They are going mental here at Loughborough. And the roof will come unglued if they hit a three or a bucket here. Williams. Eight to shoot for Bradford. Blaine. Drives at May Thompson, sorts a three. Misses everything, and Maston has it. Yeah, and for all Richard Sultz's qualities, that's not who you want shooting the ball. Johnson, Dietrich, 
looking for Smith, but has to find Johnson. May Thompson puts it in! And on the other end, Raheem May Thompson left unguarded. He is someone Derby wants shooting the ball, but big shot by a seasoned veteran. 33% from downtown, May Thompson toured off. Misses the short jumper. 10-point game. Maston. May Thompson, the extra pass to Dietrich. Good defense, though, from Salks, and away come Bradford with Blaine. Blaine just about has it, but misses everything. The ball will go to Derby. Just feel the intensity building here. Yeah, just Ronald Blaine thought he'd gotten himself to the foul line, but nothing being called again, but... We have chance to breathe, and a lot of basketball left. 3.35 remaining is an eternity. It's a 10-point game, but it's reachable. Both teams shooting around 45% from the field. With 3.23 remaining, Maston, Dietrich. And a risky pass and finds no one but Blaine. Blaine going inside, misses oh. the layup. Williams was open, but Blaine decided to go in alone. And Blaine tips it out of bounds. Bradford oh, get the wow. ball. And you can see the look on Matt Shaw's face. <laughs> it's an absolute ca catastrophe in terms of last three minutes in clock management. Ronald Blaine has a wide open layup and misses it. Then he strips the ball out of bounds. He's given back to Bradford. Oh, it's all happening here at Loughborough University. I hope you're enjoying this on the Basketball England YouTube channel. I hope your heart rate is just about settling here at home. I'll tell you, it's not doing us any favours, is it? <laughs> no, but what an exciting game <laughs> Absolutely. it is. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's been an enthralling day of basketball. We saw the Essex Rebels pile on the pressure at the top of NBL 1 by beating the Loughborough Riders. And now we are witnessing a 10-point lead for Derby, but Bradford, who trailed by as many as 22 points, are still in this with 3.04 remaining. And yeah. for you, Jason, a player who, who retired with the Bradford Dragons, personally, there's a bit of pride in this for you. There is a bit of pride in it, but if they were playing any other team, I would wholeheartedly be like, I hope they win, but... You know, both of these teams are quality outfits. You know, Matt Shaw and his program have been absolutely, I've been, I've been an admirer for years, but yes, you know, it would be great to see Chris Meller and Co. win something. Buchanan. Three minutes remaining. Salt driving at Dietrich. Gets his own rebound and puts it in. Big play by a big player. Richard Sulk staying with it as he's always done. Cuts it to eight. Eight rebounds and six points for Rahard Sulks. Dietrich nearly lost the ball. May Thompson along the baseline. And what a tough shot that is. That's one of the toughest shots in basketball, the five-foot jumper. It's almost a case of whatever you can do, I can do as well at this point, as Buchanan has it. Driving at Johnson, looking for options, got to kick it out. Blaine has it, and Blaine is fouled on the floor. Joe Buchanan picked up his dribble and then struggled to find someone. I think out of bounds here gives Bradford a chance to set something up. They don't need a three necessarily, but they need a score. And time is now definitely not Bradford's friend. 2.16 remaining, they've narrowed it down to seven points with 5.40 remaining. Uh, as the ball goes back out of bounds, Bradford get it with 10 on the shot clock. Daring Richard Sulks to take that three-point shot. He's open, wide open at the top of the key. It's not a feeling he'll enjoy, but sometimes you just have to stand up and be counted. He's wide open. Blaine, Sulks driving, kicks it out. Williams must go in. But it's off the back iron. Smith, a big rebound. Smith has it again. Big play, this. Smith driving, kicks it out. Johnson, a big three. Puts wow. it in. A 
And that's the nail in the coffin for me. Big time shot by Corey Johnson. Surely gives Derby. Buchanan to answer. That's off the back iron, wax the wiring, and Derby get the ball. And surely now that is it for Matt Shaw and his team. As a timeout is called, and Bradford will pick up full court and try press. But Corey Johnson has probably sealed the deal for this Derby Trailblazers club. 1.33 remaining, and here is the replay as Malcolm Smith drove the extra pass from Dietrich. Unselfish for him who's been on fire today, and Corey Johnson puts them to sleep. And for the Derby Trailblazers, the first team to reach their second Kick King Trophy final, all but set for their second Kick King success. But let's take nothing away from Bradford. Their first final since 2010. 14 years is a very long time. Bradford have done the community of Yorkshire, the, the, you know, the county of Yorkshire, their fans and their club proud today. Yeah, and they always do, and they have done over the years, but it's just been maybe one step too far. But stranger things have happened at sea. 133 yeah. remaining, 13-point game. You know, things have happened in these situations. Very, very rare, rightly so, but you would like to think that it's just been a bit too far for Bradford today. As you say, a lot of time, but time is not the friend of the Dragons. It is certainly cozying up with the Trailblazers. Smith. Smith travels with it, and it's a stop for Bradford, and they took 10 seconds off the game clock. As the last roll of the dice was Sulks comes out, Whelan comes in. Whelan with nine points on four for nine shooting. A lot of shooters out there now for Bradford. It is roll the dice time as Blaine gets blocked by May Thompson. Now did that hit the backboard? Either way, Maston has it. Smith, final minute. Smith, a two, dagger. I mean, you have to really respect Malcolm Smith, not just for what he's done in the second half, but also the years he's put in with both Northumbria and now Derby. He's just been able to get it done year after year. One of the most consistent players, I would say, we've ever had in Division One. There's certainly been the most loyal of Derby players or imports that have played for the Trailblazers as Buchanan puts it up for three, and that's off the back iron. Ronald Blaine kick it out. Williams fakes his man, goes for two, and Smith with the rebound. And Malcolm Smith gets fouled. Bradford still with just two team fouls, so Derby will get the ball back. They're not going to be at the foul line. Actually, three team fouls for the Dragons. But it's seemingly academic now, isn't it? As it is. Whatever happens in these last few seconds yeah. is not going to matter. But, you know, we spoke about before the game, a lot of people thought Bradford could come up with an upset, but... Well, that rebound on the previous play from Smith was his double-double, 14 points, 10 boards. Williams a three, that misses. Shot clock is turned off. Derby raises one, two kicking trophies. The color of the kicking trophy is royal blue. Derby are the Kick King Trophy winners for 2024. Absolute jubilation for the Trailblazers and their large fan base. Heartbreak for the Bradford Dragons. 
whose first final in 14 years tastes bitter defeat. But they can hold their heads up high. They put on a hell of a show, especially in the early stages of the fourth quarter. But led by 25 points from Jonas Dietrich, 24 from Sam Maston, and a double-double of 14 points and 11 rebounds from Malcolm Smith. Derby gets the job done here at Loughborough University. For the Bradford Dragons, they can hold their heads high and defeat Ronald Blaine with 21 points, seven rebounds, five assists. Joe Buchanan, the 19-year-old with 15 points for the Dragons. Yeah, you're right. Some of those Dragons can hold their heads up high. And collectively, to get to this final, they've done an excellent job. But Derby were just outstanding, John, in every way. It was Jonas Dietrich who set the tone in the first half. And then he was happy to share the wealth. And Malcolm Smith set off early. And then Sam Maston was just absolutely brilliant throughout. Derby, 89-74 winners here today as Dips Patel, the CEO of Kit King, hands out the medals to the hard-working volunteers, starting with the table officials here today, who have worked tirelessly. And the officials, Kevin Kinsella, the crew chief, Lice Osgore, the umpire, and Paulina Chirk. And Russell Levinston, the general manager of the Leicester Riders and Loughborough Riders. And for Ronald Blaine, picking up his third straight runners up medal. A guy who has been in four of the last five finals, but has tasted defeat every final he's been in. Picks up his kicking trophy, but he can hold his head up high. A great performance from him, eight for 15 from the field, 21 points. But just like in 2022, comes up short against the Trailblazers. And he left it all out there, Absolutely. John. You know, he couldn't give any more as most of these Dragons did. Zion Tordoff with an outstanding defensive display. Joe Buchanan made shots, but it just was a step too far. This Derby Trailblazers club were just a better basketball team today. Chris Meller has nothing to be ashamed of with his guys. They've worked tirelessly today, but the Derby Trailblazers have come up trumps here at Loughborough University. The first team to win two Kicking Trophy Finals. And now it's time. It is time for the Derby Trailblazers to collect their winner's medals. As you see Chris Meller there just congratulating the, uh, or shaking hands, excuse me, with the table officials. And now Derby collect their winner's medals. Sam Maston there in your picture. What a performance from him. 25, 24 points, excuse me. Two for four from downtown. Raheem May Thompson. And Corey Johnson now, who didn't have the greatest shooting performance today. Only five points for him. He had 22 when they last played in the league. Raheem May Thompson had 21 when they played in the Kick King Trophy. Jonas Dietrich, who had 22 first half points, settled for 25, a game high for Jonas Dietrich. And Rob Marsden there collecting his medal. 
But what an occasion for the Derby Trailblazers. And the MVP is none other than Sam Maston. 24 points, eight rebounds, seven assists, 61% from the field. Narrowly beats out Jonas Dietrich, who was seven for 10 from downtown, 25 points. But Sam Maston, with an index rating of 33, collects the MVP winner's medal as Matt Shaw and his coaching staff collect their winner's medals. And there is one player left, and that is probably one of Derby's most loyal imports. Malcolm Smith collects his winner's medal, and alongside Jonas Dietrich and CEO of Kicking Dips Patel, will lift the Kick King trophy, the trophy is royal blue for 2024. Your 2024 Kick King winners, the Derby Trail Blazers. Twenty twenty two Deja Vu for Derby as they lift the trophy, and there is the score right on your screen eighty nine seventy four to the Derby Trailblazers. Nothing to be ashamed of for Bradford. They played their heart out in their first final in fourteen years, and their supporters chanting Bradford. Jason Swain is courtside at the moment as Derby Trailblazer fans quickly just embrace each other, congratulate each other. Some fantastic support here today from them. But Jason Swain is courtside with the winning head coach, Matt Shaw. Matt Shaw, you were very composed before the game when we stood here. You were no smiles and now you're absolutely beaming. What a game and what a result for you guys. You must be proud. Fantastic game. Really proud of the guys, the way they found a way, absorbed that run that they had in that fourth quarter. Made us a little nervous for a while, but composed ourselves and found a way to get the win. Yeah, and it was Jonas Dietrich that set the tone. Oh, I mean, unbelievable. How, how good was he in terms of not just shooting, but his overall play. Malcolm Smith then carried you forward, but Sam Maston was outstanding. I mean, full team effort, and to get to this stage, loads of different players have had big parts through the journey, through the group stages to get to the final. Jonas was sensational in the first half, makes coaching pretty easy when someone just shoots the lights out like that. Uh, Sam was on fire the whole game, just controlled the tempo, does what he does pretty much every game. And uh, we couldn't get Malcolm going first off. Credit to Bradford, they did a great job guarding him, made it really difficult for him to get easy baskets. But Mal's a class player and was confident in the second half he'd find a way to get the scoreboard rolling and he did just that. Yeah, and I mean, you've kind of trimmed the trimmed the squad down to eight, eight really core players, I would say. But players such as Charlie Brown that have been here for a number of years and Rob Marsden, I mean, how influential are they within the unit? Bench was huge for us. Uh, Charlie on any other team probably plays a lot more minutes. Pretty difficult when you're coming on, coming on for Sam Maston, who's one of the top players in the yeah. league. Uh, but I thought Charlie was great, like you said makes plays that perhaps a lot of people don't recognise, gets the ball in the right spot. Rob's been sensational. What a signing he's been for us this year. Just the way that he composed is the whole team around him, makes great passes out of the post, scores when we need him to. Animal on the gra glass. Just, uh, yeah, bu buzzing for all the guys, but those two, yeah, made, made a massive part as well. And just overall, you know, really pleased for you, Matt. I know the culture you instill in the club. I know the Clarence Wiggins ethos has been kept going by yourself and you must be very proud today. Please go and enjoy it. It's a great win for your club. Thanks, Jason. Appreciate it. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Jason. And 
momentarily Sam Maston will be uh, brought in, the MVP of the 2024 Kick King Trophy. And what a performance he had today, 24 points, seven or eight rebounds and seven assists. And Jason is courtside now with Sam Maston amongst a sea of Derby fans. Jason, it's all on you. Take it away. Set. Sorted out. I, I'm, I'm with Sam Maston, who was the MVP of the Kick King Trophy today. Sam, the tone was set by Jonas Dietrich in the first half. He was absolutely on fire. Malcolm Smith took things over in the second half, but you were just percolating the whole game. If it wasn't and ones, it were plays for teammates. First of all, you're going to be happy with your team, but how, how proud are you of your individual performance today? Yeah, no, it, it was awesome, you know, and it's it's never about that. And for me, I just tried to step out there today and do what I could to help us get a win. You know, it was my first chance at competing for some silverware over here, and so I wanted to go out and just leave it all on the floor. And, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I got so many talented players around me, too, that it makes my job so much easier. And so I just try and take what the defense gave me, and that's what I was doing today. So, Yeah, well, you definitely did that. And it's your first year over here, and, you know, Derby of they won a trophy back in 2022, but you've been able to bring that to Derby. I mean, how important were, were the fans today as well? They were on board. Yeah, I mean, they were, they were awesome. And I can't say enough about them all season. You know, they've been there supporting us all year long. And so for us in return, we think we have a really good team and we want to try and, you know, bring home as much silverware as possible. And so today was just a start, but I mean, they were awesome, man. Such a great environment. And that's why you come over here to play in those games and kind of be in that environment. And it was awesome to see. So it was a ton of fun. Speaking of coming over here, you're from Denver, Colorado, and your parents, I believe, are here today. Yeah, correct, Which is correct, e yep. e extra exciting, but, you know, you do have the floor. People will be watching back home. Do you have anything to say to them? Yeah, I mean, I, I just appreciate everybody that's, you know, supported me throughout my career. I've had some unbelievable people in my life, whether it was teammates, coaches, mentors, my parents. They've been supportive throughout this whole thing. And so this was a, definitely a highlight of my career in a moment I'm not going to forget for a while. So it was awesome. And lastly, before you go, you're a Nuggets fan, I, I expect. Yes, correct. correct. Yeah, 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 are yeah. your predictions that they will win it again? I, I'm hoping they can repeat. I was there last year in the finals. I saw game one. So if they make it, hopefully I can sneak down there for a game or two. But yeah, I mean, they're a ton of fun to watch. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Well, you're definitely spreading the success for Denver. And what a game you had, Sam. And congratulations on the team win, but also the MVP. Good hey, job. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate you guys. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Sam. And that concludes our coverage of the 2024 Kick King Trophy. It's been a fantastic tournament for the fourth year. But for the first time, a team has won it for the second time. And that is the Derby Trailblazers. They prevail 89-74 over the Bradford Dragons here at Loughborough University. My thanks to Jason Swain and thank you to you all for joining us here on the Basketball England YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And a big thanks to our sponsors who have provided us with some glittering entertainment here today. But for now, I'm John Hobbs. Have a lovely evening wherever you are. Take care for now.